Hello you guys, welcome back to Lily Reads. You guys think I'm a liar when I say I have more books in my home. I have more books in my home. There are books in every single room in my house. When I was a little child, I wanted to buy a home just so I could have a place to store my books. There are like, this is, this is just my life. I bought a home just so my books can have a home. Like that is what I bought. Like I love books. Like I'm so sorry. Anyways, what are we here for today? We are here because I have an idea for this channel. I want to go back and read series that like pass me by. People might think I'm new to the whole booktube community. Never that. Never that. I have been watching booktube since booktube came into existence. I know the OG. Do y'all remember Cash J. Tuck? If you don't remember Cash J. Tuck, you cannot tell me you're an OG. If you do not remember readables, you do not get to tell me you are an OG booktube. Girlie, you can't. I've been watching booktube like literally since booktube was ever invented. Anyways, there are some series that just like passed me by. Just passed me by. I never read them. I don't know. It's because like I just didn't want to read them or I was focused on other things. Like back in the day, this is what I used to do. I used to find a series of books that I liked and I used to read that book series over and over and over and over. I didn't really think it was possible to read like lots of books. I thought you had books that you liked and you continuously read those books. Like that's what I thought the books that I loved at like 12 years old, I was just going to love for the rest of my life and that was gonna be my thing. And so like, I didn't really like reach out to like read a lot of book series because I was just like, these my ones. Like, I don't know what else you want me to say. So this series, I want to go back and read book series that like I missed that were popular, but I missed them. And so I said, let's start with the summer. I turn pretty. The real reason, the real reason why this is so damn pressing is because I want to watch the series on Amazon Prime. And I said, I always, if I know I have the book and want to read a book of something that's going to be a TV show or a movie, I always have to read the book first. Always have to read the book first. I am just like that. So I said, I am going to read The Summer I Turn Pretty series. Now you might be asking Kenya, these covers do not look like this anymore. I searched far, I searched wide to find the original covers. I searched far and wide to find the original covers. There is just something so nostalgic about this. Like please, there is just something so goddamn nostalgic about these covers and I had to get my hands on them. I did so. I have the original covers. This is by Jenny Han. You know Jenny Han to all the boys I love before. Jenny Han has another series. What's the series? Maybe they'll say it in here. What's the series that Jenny Han? Jenny Han has quite a few series. Jenny Han is kind of like the YA girl. Like we all know that. So anyways, I am excited to get into this. Let's see if these books are good. Now, when I'm, when I'm planning the, this like series I'm doing for my channel out, I have a few series in mind I want to get into. This is actually one of the few I think I'm going to enjoy the most because here is the thing about me. I'm not here for games, gimmicks, and stunts. I know a lot of the girls have to pull gimmicks, stunts, and all types of things to get the girls to like watch their like book channel. I don't care who watches my channel. I am so sorry. I don't get into the views politics of booktube. Like this is not, I do not expect booktube to like pay my bills. Like it's just, so this is all just fun to me. So I do not care. So I am not about to read a book series just because I think it's going to get views or people are going to want to watch it or just to like drag it. I think that is pathetic. Whoa. I think that is low key pathetic. Like I, I have to, there's not enough time in the day for me to sit here and read books that I do not think I'm going to like. I actually genuinely believe I'm going to like these books. Like seeing the pretty, I want to watch the TV show. So obviously I think I'm going to like the books. Like I think I'm going to like these books. Every series that I'm doing for this series, I think I'm genuinely going to like. I think I'm going to like the summer I turn pretty. So we have the summer I turn pretty. We have it's not summer without you and we have will always have summer. Now how the hell these books go beyond one book? I don't know because I'm assuming we're going to get a love interest in the first one and then what? 
they like break up and shit. I don't know. I haven't read a Y a white YA series because I'm assuming they're white. Jenny Han isn't white, but I'm assuming these people are white because if they not, then why the people in the series in the uh TV show white? Do I need to write it? I think they're gonna be white in this. So I haven't read a white YA series since I was a child. So We'll see how this goes. Anyways, this already is too long. We're going to start the vlog. This is going to, it's going to take me literally, like, I, the thing about these, because they're so short and, like, small, I can take my time with these. Like, I ain't got to rush to read these. I can, like, literally just, you know, sip on them all week. But anyway, we're going to get into the reading vlog. So, like, in a perfect world, I will be coming on here and, like, giving you guys an update on the summer I turned pretty, but that just is not what's happening right now. I have not even started reading this book. I have not even cracked open this book yet. So like, that's not what this part of the video gonna be. Should I watch some of the video, like some of the TV show in this vlog? Should I? Should I? And then I'm also thinking about doing a vlog about like, movies that I just watched that are based on books or TV shows that I just watched that are based on books. Hair, stay with me. Like, I watched American Psycho, I watched Jurassic Park, and I finished Dexter New Blood. All three of those things are based off a book. Well, New Blood isn't necessarily based off a book, but Dexter's based off a book. And it's like, I could read all three of those books in like a video, like, ooh, like do the video, like do the movie, stand up to the books. I don't know. I don't know. I would have to get those books. I don't own any of those books. So I'll have to get all of them and that would be a whole thing. And I'm not allowed to buy books till the end of the month. And by the time it gets to the end of the month, I am sure I will not care deeply about any of those things. So I don't know. But I did want to show you guys some books that I bought. Uh, I literally had to come on here and show you guys these books because like I want to put them away and clear this cart. So anyways, I purchased Luster. Did I tell you guys I purchased Luster? I purchased Luster. Luster is this literary fiction book. It got nominated for like awards and I don't know. I don't even know if it's actually been nominated for awards. It's been on a lot of people's list of books to read so I bought it. Um, Saba Tahir. She wrote a contemporary book and it is called All My Rage. I've heard good things. I've heard bad things but you know what? I am always the judge. Um, I bought this book called Vladimir, which do not be mistaken, this looks very like Kindle Unlimited Smutty, but it's not. This is actually a literary fiction book. The other cover for this book is extremely better. I don't know why the US cover looked like this, but it's actually about someone... Let me see. Okay, I'm gonna just read it. When I was a child, I loved old men. And I could tell that they all love me. And and so we met on the list. Okay, I think this is about this girl who dates her professor. Um, yeah. I think that's what it's about. It looks like a smutty romance, but it's literally not. It's, I think it's a story about grooming. Anyways, heard great things about it. Uh, I also purchased The Ones Who Don't Say They Love You. Another literary fiction. By the way, the reason why I'm only purchasing literary fiction is because I have to get my reading back on track. I can blame everyone else for why my reading year sucks, but the real issue why my reading year suck is I strayed from what I know. I am a literary fiction girl. Literary fiction is how I fell in love with books as an adult. Therefore, I have to get back on track. I purchased Out There by Kate Folk, which is a collection of short stories. I don't know if I like short story collections. I know I like this cover, but I don't know if I like short story collections. We'll find out. Then I purchased The Catch. Also, all these are literary fiction. I'll tell you when something isn't literary fiction. Um, The next thing I purchased is Trust. I like this cover. There's another cover to this, and this is where I will say the US cover eight down. This is a cute cover. The other one is fine, but it's giving very like mafia, but that's literary fiction as well. Um, I purchased very cold people. I don't know, literary fiction. Um, objects of desire. Um, <laughs> let's see what else. Wayward, literary fiction. 
all these are literary fiction like I wish I okay we have a non-literary fiction I bought the year of the witching so I plan on doing relatively soon a video about witch books like I don't know if I like witch books or not let's see what's going on in witch world like let's see what's going on so I bought some witch books and we're gonna see about those I bought The Paper Palace. I really hope this book is a diamond in the rough. And by I mean the rough, I mean the Reese Witherspoon book club is the rough. Like, I hope this is actually a good book that Reese Witherspoon endorsed because like Reese Witherspoon book club picks usually are terrible. I'm so sorry. Like, ugh, they should need to revamp it. Anyways, I bought Hi Hi We Go in the Dark, which is also a collection of short stories. Let me hurry this up because there, there's been no reading in this clip, but the Summer We Turn Pretty books are like not that deep. So I was like, I can just, you know, fill the vlog with some other stuff. I purchased If I Had Your Face, literary fiction. And that's it. Oh, this came today. I pre-ordered this. This was like a surprise because I haven't allowed myself to purchase any books. This was a surprise to me. Wash Day Diaries. I pre-ordered this. It's a graphic novel. I pre-ordered this. It came and that is very exciting to me. I love when I pre-order stuff and then it's like, it's here girl. Ooh, cause I was not expecting any book mail for the rest of the month. Anyways, I'm going to actually read The Summer I Turn Pretty and give you guys some thoughts. <laughs> Anyways, I'll see you in the next clip where I'll actually have read. So hello you guys. I look musty, dusty, and crusty. I am currently making my bed. And so I was like, I have not even come on here and given you guys thoughts on the summer I turn pretty. I'm almost, I'm like... <laughs> 30% done with this book and like I hate to say it I'm kind of bored okay so this has like that vibe that a lot of YA had in this time where it's just like girl telling you about her emotions about things it's almost like she's telling you a story instead of you're reading a story so like our main character is telling us about the summer she turned pretty which like I enjoy that premise because it's so funny. A lot of people don't discuss this, but like there is like, if you're like, not like the, you know, stunner all of your life, there is like a time and like a moment where you realize, oh, these niggas love me. Like all of a sudden you go from like ugly duckling to like people finding you attractive. And so I appreciate this book for like, discussing that and like doing that like there's a moment where she's like oh this is the summer I turned pretty and I'm like I know like you most girls do have a summer where they turn pretty where it's like whoa people like me in a way they didn't really like me before so I'm enjoying that but I am finding this book a little bit of a snooze fest because our main character is a bit one-dimensional like there's just not a lot going on to her like we're getting all of her thoughts but like her thoughts are just not that interesting but keep in mind she's like a 14 year old girl so like how interesting is her thoughts gonna be my thoughts at 14 years old were not that interesting either so like we have to bear in mind there I just thought this book would be my arm hurts I just thought this book would be a bit more like YA angsty summertime drama da, 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 da. and so far it's just not that it's just a girl talking about the summer where she went to the beach house and the boys that she used to hang out with now think she's cute so like let me put this down so like this is how the story starts so during the summer her and her family which is just her her mom and her brother they drive up to this summer beach house and there's this family at this summer beach house that she likes to hang out with they live in the like say in that area all year around but she only comes during the summer to like hang out and they've been doing this since they were even younger they have like history they have all of this stuff and so this is her coming that summer Summer. but this summer is a little bit different than other summers everyone is acting different you have a guy named Jeremy a guy named Conrad you have our girl and then you have her friend Taylor you have her you have her brother then you have her mother then you have the mother of Conrad and Jeremy and all of that 
So anyways, those are really all of our players. And like Conrad and Jeremy are acting different to our main character. They think she's cute. Like she's getting vibes from them. She has a crush on the Conrad guy. She's always had a crush on the Conrad guy. But he sometimes pays attention to her. Sometimes he does not. And that's pretty much what we're getting right now. Basically in the story, it's summertime. She's hanging out with these people. I don't know what else to tell you. Like, there's really just nothing more else going on beyond it. I'm just not that interested. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I wanted to really like this book. And I'm just not. I do think it's going to pick up. I am at the beginning. What page am I truly on? Okay. Yeah. I'm on page 81. So, like, it's probably going to pick up. It's just not when I, like always thought about this series like as someone who didn't read it I just thought it was a different vibe like you want to know what vibe is giving me it's giving me the vibe of like that Christmas book I read like 10 birthday dates the 10 dates of Christmas whatever when she goes on like 10 blind dates that book that's how it feels we're like she's explaining things but I'm not getting a story it's like she's telling me a story unless me reading a story anyways I'm gonna make my bed I'm gonna read a little bit more my skin looks horrible I literally just like rolled out of bed like it's not it's not giving nothing like it's not giving nothing I haven't done nothing to my face nothing nothing I'm gonna get my face right and the next time y'all see me hopefully I look better but I may not I don't know peace you guys I'm so sad I didn't like this I'm gonna give this book two out of five stars I really really did not I'm ashy boy I really, really did not like this book. I went into this book thinking I was going to like this book a lot. And like, I found it so boring. Like, I think there's two reasons as to why I didn't like this book. The first reason would be I didn't know what this book was about. And I thought I knew what this book was about. I thought this was about a girl who like went to this new town and like the cool kids decided like hey you're pretty you should hang out with us and it's about her like being like acclimated to this new crew of people who think she's pretty and she's a pretty girl that's what I thought this book was about this like fish out of water type story about this girl who like all of a sudden gets like in with the in crowd but like I think that's another book I think that's another book another series and that's not this book therefore the book that we did get I didn't like at all I did not like at all like it's just about her and like these like family friends and it's just like really stupid and this book also does the thing that I hate in books like I was never a person who deeply loved YA romance my I'm making a blueberry cobbler and my google home is about to ring and tell me that it's done so wait a minute hey google stop timer okay consider it canceled and so like it, I never liked YA romance because there's two tropes I don't like. Not tropes, two types of characters I don't like in YA romance. Number one, the girl who's not like other girls, right? That is our main character here. Like, she's slut shamey. She's like, I'm a tomboy. Oh my gosh, I'm just so like ugly and no one's gonna want me and then when the pretty girls come along who everyone thinks is pretty like she talks shit about them she thinks they're weird she thinks like they try too hard it's that and it's just very like misogynistic like even like there's this girl in this book named taylor who's our main character's best friend she treats her like shit just because taylor want niggas the same way she want niggas and it's just like you're just being a misogynistic idiot because like don't nobody want you right now and you have low self-esteem so i I don't like that and it's never confronted we're supposed to like see our character as like yeah you are different from the rest of these girls and they just don't get you and you are pretty and they do try too hard and oh my gosh they are sluts and all this stuff and it's just like girl you're pathetic and a dork and then you have the boy you have Conrad. Is that his name? Conrad. Conrad has no like good qualities. He has absolutely like zero good qualities about him. You don't know what you're supposed to like about Conrad. You're just told like he's attractive, but there's nothing else to him. Like what in his book would make you like Conrad as a hero? Nothing. Literally nothing. Like just the fact that she knew him. He's like protective and he's not like cute protective. He's like overprotective. Like it's weird how protective he is. There's nothing you're supposed to like 
like him. It's just like they tell you to like him. And, you know, he treats our main character bad sometimes. So you're supposed to believe that means he likes her. And it's just like it has all those things I don't like about romance books early, like early YA romance books. All those toxic, terrible things that treat little, that teach little girls that this is the type of love that they deserve. That teach little girls this is how boys act when they like you. That teach little girls like this is something that you should aspire to. And really it's just toxic and nasty and misogynistic. So now, this one didn't work. Am I going to continue with the series? Yes. Why? Because I'm here for a vlog. Like, I don't know if I would do it outside the vlog. But I'm actually kind of interested because this book ended as if it was like a one, like it was supposed to be a one and done. But there's two more books. So I'm curious to see. There's a there's a couple little storylines that I'm curious. Also, the two other love interests in the book, Jeremiah and Cam, that's who she should be with. Like, oh my gosh, they're 10 times better than Conrad. Anyways, they, this, they, but I always hate the male love interest in YA stories for this reason. I always hate our protagonists and I always hate the male love interest because they're all written like this. I thought maybe this would like, I wouldn't mind this in a TV show. That's why I'm still interested in watching the TV show, but I didn't like it here. Anyway, let me go check on my uh, Blueberry Cobbler and... I will see you guys maybe when I finish the next book. I feel like y'all don't need a halfway mark on the next these books. These books are so quick and easy, but maybe I will. We'll see. Bye. Sitting here about to dry my hair because it's giving Jerry Curl right now, but I'm about to dry my hair. But I wanted to come in and give you guys an update. It is so sunny. Let's, let's, let's. Ooh, this ain't much better. This ain't much better on It's Not Summer Without You by Jenny Han. This is the second book in the Summer I Turn Pretty series. Boy, oh boy, my problems with this book. Our main character, Isabel Belly, as she's called in the book, she's fucking insufferable. She's fucking insufferable. Like I said in the last book update, she is one of those I'm not like other girls. Like there, she has a best friend, like I said in the first update about this book, uh, the book last book, named Taylor. This girl named Taylor, her worst offense so far is like being cute. Being cute is her worst offense. Like Belly don't like Taylor just because Taylor's cute and Taylor knows she's cute and everybody knows that Taylor's cute too. And it's just like you are going to have to get some self-esteem. Like Taylor didn't do nothing to you yet. Like Taylor is like just doing regular 16 year old girl shit like running through these niggas like the Tomb Raider. Like regular 16 year old shit and she's acting like Taylor is just this like just this menace to society. Like she's so mean to Taylor and she's just always talking down about Taylor when Taylor's not around. But when Taylor is around she shut that shit up real quick she don't never say none of this shit to Taylor face and like it's just like girl you are weak as hell second thing I hate about this book is Conrad Conrad what do we like about Conrad what do we like about Conrad Conrad is moody nasty ugly and gutter but like what it what like I just feel like I'm missing something here I'm missing the part where we're supposed to root for her being with Conrad because like and then so you have Jeremy who is the other brother I don't know who is in game here we just got in this book we got Jeremy POVs and so I'm like is Jeremy in game possibly but thing is I Jeremy is the better brother like he's the one with sense he's the one you know who cares about he people he's the considerate one but like he's too good for Isabel like Isabel's a loser a loser and once again maybe I'm just too woke for a joke because like I do not like books that teach girls they're like this is how they're supposed to be treated and like a guy not expressing his emotions to you is not room for you to try to make him better like these this is why I used to hate romance and YA books because it just always showed you that this moody brooding mean inconsiderate guy can be changed and you can fix him and you can make him better and it's like fuck that shit like let him go like I don't know say that like go do that someplace else and that's what I don't like about this book she's trying to make Conrad like her so bad like he does one good thing and it erases all the terrible things he did like in the past and then that brings on the third thing this is also stupid because Conrad is dealing with the fact that his mother is dead his mother is dead and like you over here pestering him about a relationship with you and it's like his mother is dead girl like you're just going to have to move the hell on and like stop bringing this shit up so sometimes in a way I'm on Conrad's side because I'm just like 
his mama day, girl. Like, what, what do you want him to do? Like, but he could do better. Like, it's just, this book bothers me. This book bothers me. Our main character bothers me. She is just so not, you guys, there's a scene in this book where she goes to go find Conrad. And so they end up in New England back at the beach. And, um, she, like, the Taylor girl has came up with this idea, like, uh, Conrad has treated you bad, so you need to, like, show him what he lost and all this stuff. So she replaces all her, like, boyish clothes with, like, girly, like, girly little fun clothes, right? And so, like, she goes to, like, look in her suitcase, and she realizes that she replaced her pajamas, which her pajamas was just, like, an oversized t-shirt, with just, like, this cute little pink pajama set. And, like, Belly acts like that is the worst sin in the world. She's like, why would I wear this two-piece, like, pink little, and it's a like, girl, it's just pajamas. It's just a two-piece pajama set that's pink and got hearts on it. Really, like, no one's going to think you're, like, the rest of us silly bitches if you wear pink pajamas to bed mama everyone's gonna know that you're still a wreck you're just like the boys you're not like the rest of us slutty bitches if you wear some pink pajamas for one night little girl like it bothers me so like I promise you everyone is still gonna see you as one of the cool girls you're gonna still be one of the cool girls if you wear this little two-piece pink little set like she's just insufferable I'll come to you guys at the end of this and tell you my thoughts but it's still looking bleak but here I am like still reading it because like I'm like now I'm a little bit interested now that we have a, Jer a Jeremy POB but Jeremy's desperate down like it's just like let's go I'm gonna go dry my hair so I can stop looking like a wet dog and I'll see you in the next one peace do I like Jenny Han can't say that I do I cannot say that I do I am giving this book a one out of five stars these books are bad <laughs> these books are bad and i think the reason i don't enjoy these books is like i'm too woke for the joke <laughs> like i'm too like picky about what i like to see in books and what i find to be toxic and like terrible behavior to put in books to like books like this our main character isabel is so fucking mean like she's so fucking mean and the book doesn't do a good job at like showing you that you're supposed to see her as mean i can't get over the way she treats this taylor character who is back home she treats her best friend T taylor so bad and she treats her best friend taylor like she's a nuisance to her just for Taylor, just because taylor is just like a regular girl going through regular girl stuff because taylor is not obsessed with these two random boys who live up in new england she doesn't get it and she doesn't know what love is and she doesn't know what this and it's like Taylor's being normal. Taylor is not weirdly obsessed with two dudes who like are basically her brothers. <laughs> like that's why Taylor doesn't understand what the hell you're going through. And then this Isabel girl weaponizes her family friend dying whenever she needs to. Like at one minute it's like forget about my family friend. Like let's not talk about that. I don't want to deal with my mom grieving. I don't check up on Jeremiah even though his mom died. I just care about Conrad. I need to be there for Conrad and Conrad this and Conrad does Conrad like me and so everyone else follows suit Taylor follows suit and it's just like okay we're not gonna talk about your dead like godmother basically and then she gets upset she's like I'm sorry my godmother died and it's just like what like people are just following you like she's making issues out of non-issues and just being nasty to Taylor and it's weird our main character's behavior is so fucking weird and mean and rude and nasty and it's like okay and then my issue with also like the writing of this book why do we like Conrad why do we like Conrad? This book has yet to show me proof why Conrad and Isabel should be a couple. Why they should be a couple. Like, it's obvious this is like Conrad is in game, right? Even though at the end of this book, it seems like she's with Jeremiah, which let's get on how weird that is. Like dating someone's brother. Like, I'm just too, maybe I'm too grown. I am too grown for this book. She's dating a brother. And now I'm showing the third and final book. She's going to be with Conrad. And it's just too weird 
weird for me. Like, but why are we Conrad's? What 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 about Conrad? Is she like like she'll just be so hung up on Conrad, and you're like. What you have to explain to me what there is to like about Conrad because the book has not shown me these like emotional moments that you and Conrad have had and any moments we do get with Conrad and her it feels like big brother and little sister are y'all getting that it feels like big brother and little sister it doesn't feel like two people in a relationship I think it's because Isabel as a character feels so so young compared to like these boys even though there's only a year age gap between them she feels so young and so like stupid she didn't know what a keg was and she's freaking 16 years old like just like re regular shit she just seems so oblivious to and you're supposed to be like oh you're so quirky you're so cute like oh innocent you but it's just like she reads as like someone's childhood sister and it's so funny she doesn't want to be left out of shit but she loves leaving other people out of shit because like she wants all the attention to be on her she's so not like other girls like <laughs> they asked her they were going someplace and there was only one bed and so like the guy was like you can have the bed like I'll sleep on the floor you shouldn't sleep on the floor you're a girl and she's like what does being a girl have to do with me not sleeping on the floor and it's just like shut up and take the bed shut up and take the bed like we get it you're a tomboy you're like other boys like the boys love you you're a boys girl like but shut up and take the fucking bed the friend Taylor had like asked to come hang out at the beach with them and she's like Taylor why do you want to go why do you want it's just like you're jealous because if God Almighty a cute girl come along nobody's gonna think about you because you're a loser so we have an issue here you guys know if you watch my other reading vlogs I don't like to have a negative blog up <laughs> I enjoy reading enjoyable books I am pretty sure now that I know she's with Jeremiah at the second book it's taking me back to YA world I totally forgot that in YA world you get the you get the end game love interest in the first book the middle book you get like the you know the red herring the love interest who's gonna get like you know gypped at the altar and then the third book you see why our main our, our first love interest comes back into the story and they get together I totally forgot I haven't read a YA romance series in a long long time I haven't read a YA series in a long time so like I know Conrad is in game in this one though we'll always have summer Conrad is in game so do I need to read it do I need to read I am curious how Jeremiah reacts to that if they're dating um her getting back with Conrad I am curious but am I that curious am I that curious should I read it or should this be a video entitled I DNF'd the summer I turned pretty series will always have some I don't know if the next clip is me you're looking at the time right now on this video and you know the answer I'm sitting here in the here and now and I don't know the answer if I'm gonna read this um if I come back in the next clip and I'm telling you guys bye I decided not to read it obviously if I come back and start telling you guys about the book I don't want to be a loser these books are so quick these books literally take all of three hours to read like they're so quick but I just don't want to. The, I will say this book was more like interesting. Like I had more feelings about it. Like it annoyed me more and was more interesting than the first one. So like if the third one is still on, like if it's the same pace, it's still going to get a two or three star. I'm sure because me and Jenny Han, I believe are beefing. But what do y'all think? What do y'all think? What should I do? I don't know. Well, we'll find out. Peace. Okay, you guys, as you can see by the time I'm going to read the last book. I'm reading the last book. I'm on chapter 21. It's happening. We are doing this. So this is will always have summer. Let me give this book its due time. Let me at least explain to you guys what's happening in this book. So at the end of it's not summer without you. She decided 
decided she wasn't going to be with Conrad. Her and Conrad had come to an end. It was not going to work. And she decided to give Jeremy a chance. So we have skipped an entire two years into the future. We actually skipped those two years at the end of the last book. The last chapter is us going two years into the future. So we pick up at the two year mark and basically Belly is in, is finishing her freshman year of college. She and J Jeremy and Belly and Taylor all go to the same school. So the best friend goes to the school. Her boyfriend, Jeremiah is his name, not Jeremy. Jeremiah and Belly, they all go to the same school. Conrad is in California where he is pre, he's pre-med over at another school. So he's not with them, but the three of them are together. And Isabel and Jeremiah are dating. Jeremiah is in this fraternity. Uh, Belly said she doesn't want to be in sorority because that's a too a little bit too much like being like the rest of these silly bitches. So she's kind of just going through life. Her and uh, Jeremiah, they're doing fine. They're doing fine. But all of a sudden, there is a party. People are talking. There's a girl who's in the sister sorority to Jeremiah's fraternity. And she finds out that they hooked up in Cabo. So she finds out that Jeremiah has cheated on her. And that kind of starts our book. We're starting another summer. And Jeremiah has cheated on Belly after two years of dating. Of course he cheated. Let's get into my thoughts. Of course he cheated. Because we have to set up this Conrad relationship. Jeremiah was a little bit too perfect in the first two books. So we have to do something that seems to be out of character for Jeremiah to bring him down to. But first of all, Jeremiah liking Belly is bizarre anyways. But then put on top of that, like now he cheats on Belly. It's just a little bit too like we need to write him off. Like it's like writing him out of the book because she can't be with him. But this book gets worse because guess what Jeremiah does? He becomes a manipulative piece of shit out of nowhere and asks Belly to marry him. He asks Belly to marry him and Belly being naive as hell, she says yes. She says yes. And once again, the little best friend Taylor, the only one with sense sitting here like, but did he cheat on you, girl, like two days ago? Like, how do you want us to feel? He did cheat. He still wants to marry her. So they're getting married. They're getting married. And my problem with this is I'm on page 100 of this book. There's not many more pages left of this book. So she's obviously going to end up with Conrad. But it's like, when are we going to get a relationship with her and Conrad? Like, that's the part that bothers me so much about this book. I'm willing to overlook all the problematic stuff and just blame this on this being the time. We were not where we are today. So this is just the time. Belly is insufferable, not like other girls. It's problematic. It's misogynist. It's infantilization. All of these things. I'm willing to overlook all of that if there was a good plot here. If there was a good plot, if there was a good romance at the center of this we have never gotten moments with Conrad and Isabel that show that they're they're in a loving that they could be a loving relationship. We just have it. We just have not. We don't. We don't even have it with Jeremiah. But at least we have a little bit of inkling that her and Jeremiah were at one point friends and could be lovers. We don't get that here, and that's what I'm just so confused by and now that we're dealing with the whole we have to unravel Jeremiah and Belly from being engaged to one another. I just don't get it. I just, I just don't get it. I don't get how these books, I know exactly how these books became popular. There's certain, it's the reason why Colleen Hoover books are popular. It's the reason why certain people, like y'all like this shit. <laughs> and so I know y'all ate this shit up a decade ago. So y'all like this type of stuff. So I know exactly why it's popular. I just, this ain't good. This is not, this is just not good. Because me at my big age is saying, ma'am, how about we date people who aren't the boys who have known you since you were an infant? How about we look around the college and see who's at the college we could date? Like, why are you putting yourself in this box at the ripe young age of 18? Why at 18 are you acting like these two boys who are basically like your brothers are the only people you can fucking date? I want her to break up with Jeremiah and I, and I want her to go see the world. I want her to go see the world. I want her to see who's at, who's on her college campus at least. It's just ridiculous. 
you should not be over here trying to have forever with boys you've known since you was a little kid like it's a little pathetic anyways i'm gonna finish this book relatively soon so i can end this video because i want to because i want to i'm tired of it besides i was holding out hope till the bitter foolish end that she would not end up with one of these boys i was i did not want her to end up with conrad or jeremiah but of course she ends up graduating from college and marrying conrad spoiler alert these books let me get all of them because i mean it about every last one of them Overall, I'm going to give this entire series one stars. If you have not read this series, I would skip it and go straight into the TV show. I'm sure the TV show is 10 times better. I'm going to watch the TV show because I think the TV show is right up my alley of mess. But these books are putrid. Like, they are not good in any way. So my thoughts on the final book this whole marriage storyline got dragged out far too long what do we like if i've said it once i've said it about all the books what do we like about conrad what are we root like they try to make us believe conrad and isabella just this love story that just has to happen they just find their set themselves like just pushed together all the time it's like where where are we getting this from where are we getting this from and then isabel is so pitiful like just so pitiful and just pathetic like she didn't even break off the wedding it wasn't even her who decided she shouldn't marry Jeremiah and that's my biggest problem with Isabel as a character beyond her being like a pick me I'm just like the boys type bitch my other issue with her is that she has no real thoughts she has no real thoughts she does nothing because she wants to do it she just everything is just everyone moves around her and she goes with the flow like she goes with the wind like it's just like what thoughts do you have outside of yourself have you ever even thought to yourself you don't have to be with either of these two boys or are you just so childish and immature that you just feel this is how it's always been it's been Conrad and Jeremiah who am I gonna chew I like are you just that dumb because that's what it gives it gives just that dumb like she thought Conrad did not want her so she had to be with Jeremiah and now she broke like the Jeremiah broke off the wedding and so she goes through college and it's like Conrad is sending me notes while I'm in Spain let me go get back with him like have you ever thought this isn't worth it like Conrad and Jeremiah just can be perfect family friends and you should go see what the world has to offer maybe you should be less worried about what you're dead mother's friend thinks about your life and her boys and all of that and think about your future have you ever thought about that like she just has no agency there's no agency in Isabel's life she's a loser I would much rather have read a book about what Miss Girl Taylor is up to in this year because at least it seems like she has agency over her life this is just about a pathetic little girl who like thinks she's in love with two older boys who are friends with her mother's like who who's her mother's friend's son who she's grown up with all her life there's just no there's been like and I don't mind that dynamic if there was proof of a real romance here if there was proof between a Isabel and Jeremiah romance proof between a Conrad and Isabel romance there's just never been proof you flash back in time and just give us these glimmer of moments that are just like moments you could have with anyone with anyone it's like what about these give romance I am so disappointed. I am so disappointed. I thought these were going to give me all the nostalgia of just like young adult romance. It was going to take me back to a time, restore a feeling because even though a lot of those books of like yesterday are like problematic and like maybe they don't have the best writing, they don't have the best tropes, they don't have 
all of that. They just restore a feeling, a feeling of what that time used to be like. But this restores a feeling in the worst way. It restores all the things that like made that era like problematic. Everything, the reason why we kind of left these books in the dust, like why we kind of moved on for this type of thing. And it bothers me so because I do believe there is a few writers who are trying to bring this era back this like senseless YA where no nothing really matters nothing makes sense it's not it's I don't need my books to necessarily be feminist because that would take a call to action but I do want my books to like think about things in a bigger picture and the message that they are sending across to young woman readers and I feel like that is what the, like there are people who are still like who are trying to write books like this in the here and now and I have a problem with that and it's even worse because at the very least these books are young adult there's adult writers who are trying to write books like this because like there's people who like books like this but I find something fundamentally wrong with books like this because I don't like what they teach young girls whoa that is like a huge like I cast a big net there and I don't know if it made sense but no Jenny Han I am so happy you probably redeemed like you redeemed your yourself with your next series but these were bad how y'all let Jenny Han get away with this <laughs> Jenny Han should have never made it to all the boys I loved before like I like she should have never I've already read I read to all the boys I loved before so I know I like that book I haven't read it in years 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 but like I I remember liking to all the boys I loved before and I don't think it was this bad we're gonna read in the distant in the distant future we're gonna read to all the boys I loved before series again and we're gonna see do those hold up I hope they do but these are bad these are bad like I'm so sorry I'm so I the covers are nostalgia down and I love them I love them for the nostalgia but these you dealing with three characters going through the most like ridiculous shit no 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 so what did we learn from this video mm, I think most YA from the past we probably especially YA romance that is strictly just YA romance no other plot can probably leave there we can probably leave it right there like we do not need to go read YA romance again Kenya like we just do not we do not need to go back and find old YA series and read them if I have no nostalgia to them because I didn't read them as a child, I don't need to go back to them. I think that's, that is what we learned from this video and I'm okay with that. So I no longer need people to say and recommend, you never read this. No, I didn't. And I'm happy that I didn't because this, there's some people who still, by the way, go look at the Goodreads, right? Goodreads ratings for all of these books. They're up there like in the high threes. Y'all, we in bad shape. <laughs> Anyways, I love you guys so much and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.